Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. So yes, back to talk about another movie that really needs more recognition. Um, now, a couple of weeks ago, I was talking about this film, I Walk the Line, which was a John Frankenheimer movie from 1970 uh, that stars Gregory Peck and Tuesday Weld. Really good movie. Um, it was interesting during the course of watching this to hear John Frankenheimer talk about how ideally he would have liked Gene Hackman uh, in the part that was played by Gregory Peck. Um, and that just prompted me to look back at the filmography of John Frankenheimer. And I then found that the film that he made directly before I Walk the Line uh, was this one, The Gypsy Moths from 1969. Now, this is an absolutely fascinating film. Uh, it involves three stunt skydivers who come to a small Midwestern town in Kansas uh, and prepare to do a series of jumps to entertain the town. Now, this film is really about taking risks. Uh, it is about the limits that you're prepared to push yourself to. Um, and it's about having the courage of your convictions. Um, so, yeah, this is a really, really fascinating one. Now, lots of things that are fascinating about this. Uh, so the cast that we have here is uh, Burt Lancaster. And John Frankenheimer was working with Burt Lancaster for the fifth time. He'd previously worked with Burt Lancaster on uh, The Young Savages, on Birdman of Alcatraz, on Seven Days in May and on The Train, uh, one of my absolute favourites. And then, like I say, we have Gene Hackman. And Gene Hackman was fresh from having been successful in Bonnie and Clyde in a supporting role. And so he was getting uh, notices for that. Still not yet a big name, but uh, definitely about to burst into the 70s. And then also as the third skydiver, we have uh, the youngest of the skydivers, and he's played by Scott Wilson, uh, who you can see here. And again, he was pretty fresh from having been in this uh, film adapted from the Truman Capote novel In Cold Blood, a big success, this one. And then also in the cast, we have Deborah Carr, and she had been with Burt Lancaster 16 years earlier in the famous From Here to Eternity Plus, as well, making her feature film debut, we have Bonnie Bedelia, uh, only age 21 at the time. And uh, for many people, I guess, uh, she will be most famous for being Mrs. John McClane, or is it Holly Gennaro, uh, in Die Hard. But yeah, so first of all, the casting choices that uh, John Frankenheimer has made in this is really, really interesting because Burt Lancaster and Deborah Carr kind of represent the older school uh, style of Hollywood. And then we've got Gene Hackman really on the cusp of being... Uh, a significant actor in the 70s, obviously going on to be in uh, The French Connection. And in fact, John Frankenheimer then worked with Gene Hackman on French Connection 2. Uh, and similarly, Scott Wilson as well, a new breed of actor coming through. So this difference in actors and acting style really makes this film interesting. Um, Burt Lancaster's character in this is really sort of quiet and understated, but hugely, hugely masculine and authoritative. Gene Hackman's character uh, in the middle of the two, I suppose, is a much more brash character um, and he needs to be outspoken a lot of the time um, and is never quite sure whether he actually admires his peers or despises them, really. And then we have the youngest of the three, which is Scott Wilson. And he's, if you like, a bit damaged by his past. His parents uh, were killed in a car crash um, and when they come to this Kansas town uh, Deborah Carr is actually playing his aunt and it's uh, her and her husband who agree to uh, welcome the three stunt drivers to their home so that they can prepare uh, for this great spectacle that they're going to put on for the town and it's while the three characters are staying in the household of Deborah Carr that the human drama really plays out. And this is really, really fascinating because, again, it's although the film is about testing the limits of risk when you're in the air, it's also testing risks and boundaries on the ground level as well. Burt Lancaster's character, like I say, hugely masculine and authoritative and Deborah Carr quite clearly being in a bit of a staid marriage and taking a, a shining to Burt Lancaster's character. And so there's this frisson between the two of them and how far will they be able to um, make that go? I mean, Burt Lancaster is very much a 
take character. He's looking for opportunities all the time and he's prepared to take those risks. Um, he's a getter. Um, whereas Deborah Carr, she's been in this marriage for a long time. Wow, it'll be a big thing for her to push herself to go with Burt Lancaster's character if he were to want to take her with him. And then Gene Hackman's character, like I say, the really brash type. So uh, he's much more about being out on the town, seeing strippers and just enjoying himself. He's a very much in the moment kind of character. And then Scott Wilson's character, a much quieter and more reserved kind of character, clearly damaged by his past. And um, perhaps that feeds into also some of the reasons why he jumps. So really, each of these three guys have different reasons for jumping and how far they're prepared to push themselves and the risks that they're prepared to take. So all of that is a really fascinating part of the drama. But then we come on to the actual uh, skydiving sequences themselves and wow these are really really terrific sequences that bookend the film so we open with a skydiving sequence and then we end as well with uh, a, quite an extensively long uh, sequence of uh, skydiving jumps now apparently over 1300 jumps were done uh, throughout the course of making this film in order to be able to film all of these uh, really amazing sequences uh, they used actual skydivers to do this and they had skydivers who would have uh, cameras on their helmets and uh, uh, there was use of helicopters as well. Um, so we get some really, really amazing footage of these uh, jumps. Now there is a criticism with the film that uh, John Frankenheimer sort of let go of the plot and allowed too much time uh, on these skydiving sequences. But I'm not sure I really agree with that. I think that there's just this tremendous balance between this excitement and exhilaration of what's going on in the sky and this very much more muted and understated drama that's going on on ground level. Um, and I think it just makes for a really interesting dynamic. Now, the camera work in this, I mean, obviously, we've got uh, the skydivers who are uh, assisting with getting these amazing shots that are in the air. Uh, but on ground level, John Frankenheimer is using some of his uh, what he calls trademark skills. So he's using wide angles and a shallow depth of focus so that he has characters that are um, very much close in shot together. Uh, and so we get this real drama in a lot of the intimate moments between the characters. Now, this film didn't do very well on release, and in fact, it kind of got dumped and buried a little bit, which is probably why a lot of people may not know about it, myself included, and I love Gene Hackman. I'm a big Gene Hackman fan. Um, but yes, uh, reading a little bit more about the background on this, uh, it's interesting to note that really when this film got released, um, there were uh, at least one studio executive who made really cruel remarks about um, Burt Lancaster and Deborah Carr being really for their age too old to be doing love scenes together and that that was obscene for people to want to watch and uh, so that this film was not a good movie. Um, that's really hurtful kind of stuff. I mean, there is a nude sequence in this that involves Burt Lancaster and Deborah Carr. Uh, whether or not it needed to be nudity in this film, that's debatable, uh, but it's still quite tenderly done. Um, not a bad sequence at all. But clearly a hurtful thing uh, to happen at that time. And indeed, Deborah Carr, although she had already uh, made another film in 1969 called The Arrangement, she then didn't actually appear in any more movies until the 80s. Um, so yeah, that's a very interesting thing to note and a sad thing to note as well because Deborah Carr is just such a legendary and beautiful and wonderful actress, uh, obviously the star of movies such as The Innocents um, and Black Narcissus and Heaven Knows Mr. Allison, just a, a really wonderful actress. So yes, overall, whilst there may be some criticisms with uh, the tone and the pace and the plotting of The Gypsy Moths, for me, I thought this was an absolutely terrific film. Like I say, the casting in this just makes it so, so interesting. That dynamic between um, 
older style actor of Burt Lancaster meeting with the newer style acting style of Gene Hackman. Wow, that's just so fascinating. Scott Wilson, again, does really, really well in this. Deborah Carr, wonderful. And uh, yeah, really lovely to see a young Bonnie Bedelia here. Um, so yeah, I absolutely love the Gypsy Moths. I loved the drama that was going on on the ground. And uh, yeah, for sure, the um, aerial sequences are really thrilling. So yes, I do encourage you to seek this one out if you can. Like I say, I'm not sure that it's available on Blu-ray or 4K. I, I don't think that it is. Um, so yes, I got this on DVD. Uh, the DVD includes a great commentary from John Frankenheimer as well as a behind the scenes look at some of the skydiving in this. Uh, so yeah, for me, this was a, a great uh, DVD to purchase and I absolutely adore it. OK, there we go. That's another roundup of another movie and hopefully of interest to you. Uh, yeah, let me know if you've seen this movie, perhaps, and uh, let me know your thoughts. Let me know, perhaps, if you're going to seek it out. Um, hopefully, join me again for some more movie talk and I will see you again. Uh, thank you very much for watching if you do and for any comments like I say I always really appreciate the comments so thank you for that if you take the time to do that. Thank you. Um, OK, all the best to you. Bye bye.